Okay, now let's uh, as the last part of this proof, we need to show that the S P is a complete space. Okay, we want to show this is complete, so that is a fractured space. So to show that it is complete, we need to show that every Cauchy sequence in S is convergent, and the limit is inside S. Okay, suppose we have this sequence x n, so it's C is Cauchy. Okay, now this n is the uh, index of the sequence, but each xn, for each fixed n, the xn uh, is a sequence. Itself is a sequence, right? So it's a xn1 and xn2, so on and so forth. We need to show that. Uh, we first uh, uh, recall what is the Cauchy, what's the definition of a Cauchy right now? So the Cauchy means, the sequence Cauchy means that the p of x uh, n plus let's say n plus m minus x n. We know this is a distance between x n plus m and the x n, right? Distance between the two. So this is Cauchy means that for any epsilon, um, there exists a capital N depending on epsilon only, such that this is less than epsilon for all the N greater than or equal to capital N, and all the M, natural number M. Right, that's what we mean by Cauchy. And now, uh, the definition for the p right now is the sum for k from 1 to infinity. This is the index for each in each of this sequence. So sum of over 2k in the xkn plus m minus xkn divided by 1 plus xkn minus xk, uh, so n plus m and x and k. Right, that's what we have on uh, the definition. And we know that this is going to be less than epsilon. Okay. Um, so because of this, we can see that for each fixed k, if I fix any k, so for any So the k is like the indices here, so it's the x, k, n. Uh, for each fixed k, what we can see is um, this quantity minus x, k, n. This is bounded by the uh, mm, I would say this is less than or equal to the uh, how to say this Well, I want to make this somehow simpler. Um, let me just uh, let me just do this. Okay. For any fixed k, I have this plus x k and plus m minus x k n and I know that this is less than equal to the sum of all the k's right 
because this is merely just one term of the sum, and this is equal to the p of x n plus m minus x n. <clears throat> so it's going to zero. It's converging to zero. So what this tells us is that for any fixed k, this thing goes to zero as n goes to infinity. It doesn't matter what m is. Okay? So what this tells us is that this goes to zero because the k is fixed. And this goes to zero means that numerator goes to zero. Right? Otherwise, if numerator is not going to zero, then this is converging to some, say, con converging to some e from zero. This is also converging to some e from zero. Or it's bounded away from zero, then it's easy to show that it's not converging to zero. So this goes to zero means that numerator goes to zero as n goes to infinity. Okay? And what this tells us is that for every fixed k, we treat this um, as a sequence in n. So that basically means that I extract the kth term for each of this uh, each of this, okay. For each of this, I extract the kth term, and it will form a sequence in R. And this sequence must be Cauchy, okay, as we showed. When n uh, goes to infinity, this goes to zero, no matter what m is. So this is Cauchy. It's Cauchy in uh, R, and because R is complete, we know that the this x and this x and k converge to something. Right, must be converted to something, and this depends on the k. So let's say I call it x k star. So it means that for for every fixed k, this sequence as a sequence Cauchy sequence in R converted to a number x k star. Okay, and so we did this for every fixed k, and then I'm going to define x star just to enumerate my uh, x star. I just obtain for each k. And now I want to show that the whole sequence xn converge to this point x star in the space S. So I want to show this is Cauchy and they are going to convert to this. Okay, so the proof is similar. Uh, the main idea of the proof is similar to the one above. Uh, we need to show that this, eventually we need to show that this one should go to zero as epsilon as n goes to infinity. Or for every epsilon, there exists some n large enough, kept n large enough, such that this is the less than epsilon. So now let's see what this one is. This is actually equal to the sum where n goes to from one to infinity. Um, okay, and just call the definition k minus x k star a plus one x k n and so x k star. So we want to show that this is converging to zero. This can be arbitrarily small for n large enough. And then we can again break this submission into two parts. One part is to the capital K. x k n minus x k star. And the other part is again over 2k xn minus x star 1 plus skn minus xk star. Okay, so now uh, the idea is again we choose the k large enough, choose the capital K large enough so that. Uh, we know that this one is always less than the one, no matter what. And uh, when we choose k large enough, this whole thing it will be less than or equal to sum of 1 over 2k, where k is from capital K plus 1 to infinity. So when the capital K is large enough, it's equal to 1 over 2 to the, two, to the k, capital K. When k, capital K is large enough, this is going to be less than half epsilon. Okay? And uh, then... Uh, we just need to fix the k that is capital K that is so large, and then we look at the first sum right here, and we realize that because there are only finite many terms, capital K terms, 
and uh, I know that for each k, I know this uh, it's a sequence. This is a convergent sequence. It's converging to k star. So that means this each of these is converging to zero, and there are only finite many of them. So I know when n is large enough, this will be uh, less than say uh, half epsilon. So that means this one is less than half epsilon for each for each k. Okay, so. The idea is for any epsilon, there exists capital K, which depends on the epsilon. Uh, this natural number large enough such that one over two to the capital K is less than half epsilon. And there also exists some n um, that depends on the uh, epsilon and also the capital K, but eventually it will depend on epsilon only. Right, such that uh, this x k n converge to or this minus x k star be less than half epsilon for any n greater than or equal to capital N, and also for any k. From one to notice that I need or only have finite many of them, so I can do this. I can make sure that this is less than epsilon. Okay. And previously we said that uh, this convert to this for each fixed k. This convert to this. So say I can find that n one such that when the little n is greater than n one. This is less than equal to epsilon, half epsilon. And then for n equals to two, uh, f sorry for k equals to one. I can show that this is less than half epsilon uh, when the n greater than equal to n1. And then for k equals to 2, I need to find n2, capital N2, such that when this n is greater than equal to capital N2, I can have this less than epsilon. But there are only finite many of them, so I can just need to, so let's say I have this k in minus x k star this is, uh, for any n greater than equal to, say, uh, nk for k from 1 to capital K. Okay, now I can just choose my this n here to be the maximum of n1 through n capital K, and then that will make this hold for every k. Okay, so I have this, and uh, I just continue with what I have over there. Uh, there will be just a uh, less than equal to the first term, as we said, each one will be less than half epsilon, so it will be less than equal to, or less than equal, less than this, doing time over k, k is from 1 to capital k. And the second term we know is less than half epsilon, but this one is less than equal to 1, that's why this is less than uh, or equal to epsilon. Or even equal to epsilon doesn't matter. So we show that for any epsilon, there exists some n large enough such that uh, this is less than epsilon. Okay, so that shows that x n converts to x star. Okay, the x n converts to x star, and it's also easy to show that x star is inside the space. We can always do this at the last step, uh, where we have the p x star. We know that it is by triangle inequality is less than equal to, say, uh, x k or x n, say, minus x star plus p of x capital N, right, by triangle inequality. Then I know that when n is large enough, this is less than epsilon. And the, each for each, for this capital N, uh, this one is finite. Right, so because this one, this one itself is in S, so that's why this whole thing is finite, and that means X star is also in S. Okay, we show that this sequence is not is is Cauchy uh, for every Cauchy sequence converted to some point in, in S. That means S is complete. Okay, so this is the last example. We can see that it's more it's much more complicated than the previous two. 
uh, why, why this is because the the P has very mild condition on it. You only have like five of the quest, five of the, five of the properties right here, and uh, <clears throat> so to show that it's a fractured space, we need we may need some effort. But this is general enough and has some interest in uh, in certain in certain applications. Uh, but what we will be more interested in, at least in this course, is is on these two cases we said earlier. Uh, for example, something like this Rn, which is the most trivial one, or something like this. Oh, uh, sorry, this one, uh, fresh space, uh, because the uh, a a very important property of this P is that when we scale the x by some number, say for example here, uh, I have p of a times x, where a is a scalar, uh, I can show that this is equal to the norm of a, or the absolute value of a, times p of x. And similarly, this one is the same. If I multiply the a by u, uh, uh, u by a, which is uh, some scalar, a there, then this is the same as I multiply the p of u by the norm of or the absolute value of a. So this case, in this case, we call p homogeneous. Uh, and the, this one apparently is now, if I multiply x by some constant a, scalar a, then the, it is not equal to p of uh, a times p of x. So this example, uh, this s is not, or this, new, this p is not homogeneous. So we want something. We want something that is homogeneous, uh, like we uh, know for for norms or for like Euclidean norms. Uh, it is homogeneous. So we want something like that. And by adding this property, we can get the so-called norm. Okay. So formally, if we have some p that is even stronger that has the homogeneity, then we call this p a norm. Okay. So. We say this from x to r non-negative numbers is called a norm. If um, for any x, y, z in x and also any scalar uh, in k, say there is first it is positive definite, meaning that the norm of x is always greater than or equal to zero, and if it's equal to, it's equal to zero only if uh, it itself is zero. Second is that it is uh, homogeneous, meaning that you take the norm of ax, where a is uh, a scalar, then we'll get that. The third one is uh, triangle inequality, as we always needed. Okay. And if uh, this, if this uh, mapping satisfies all these three conditions, then we call this mapping a norm. Okay. So uh, as you can see, the major thing is in this. Uh, previous for p, we only have symmetry. So px equals to p of negative x. Apparently, that's true for norm. And also with this second one here, we can show the continuity of the mod, uh, scalar modification because uh, in this case, as you can see, if uh, x goes to zero, uh, x, uh, sorry, xk goes to zero, or the norm of xk goes to zero, apparently it implies that the norm of axk goes to zero because the norm of axk is just the a times the norm of xk. And that goes that goes to zero, so that means the whole thing goes to zero. And also, if you have like uh, a k goes to zero, then then you know that the a k x is equal to the absolute value of a k times the norm of x. But this is a constant. But this one goes to zero, so the whole thing will go to zero. So this second one actually implies uh, all of them. The item two, item four, and item five uh, in the definition for p. So it makes this all these three happen. So that means the norm itself must be a a p function as we talked about earlier. But it's even stronger because you have the homogeneity.
Okay, so that's why uh, it will be more interesting in this case for this kind of, such kind of norm. Okay, so it's called a norm. It's called a norm. Okay, um, so not only this, uh, this property is just three simple um, uh, properties will guarantee that this this norm and also there's there are many other properties that we can talk about uh, for norms for example a norm must be always continuous meaning that if you have as k goes to x then that must mean the norm of x k convert to the norm of x if you treat the norm as some function then this is essentially just a function applied to x k uh, will convert to the function applied to r evaluated at x. And the reason is pretty straightforward, as you can see. This just means what? This means that xk minus x, norm of this goes to 0. And this means that uh, the norm of xk minus the norm of x by triangle inequality, this is always less than equal to this. So if the right-hand side goes to zero, then that must mean that the difference of the two numbers uh, will go to zero. So that's equal to just this. Okay, so a norm must be a continuous mapping or continuous function. Okay, so in this case, we uh, make the P stronger. So we have the P X and what we used to have the P to define the fractional space, but now we're more interested in the, the norm when I replace the P with this norm, and this is called a B star space. Just uh, not yet uh, Banach space. Uh, only when it is complete, we call it a Banach space. So X norm is complete, meaning every Cauchy sequence is convergent, then this is called a Banach space. Okay, so you can see that this, if we only have the norm, this is actually what we said in the title, it's the normed linear space. Linear space. The reason is this linear space itself, and it has also equipped with the norm as we define here, it's the norm. Okay, so it's called a, a normal linear space. And if it's complete, then we call it a Banach space. So in other words, Banach space is a complete normed linear space, or complete normed vector space. Okay, so that's the definition for Banach space. Okay, let's see a few examples. Uh, the most famous one is the uh, RP space, we learn in a real analysis or in major theory, suppose we have, say, LP of some interval, say, 0, 1, where P is bigger than, let's say, just to consider somehow special case, 1 to positive infinity, and then this is the Banach space. Okay? In, the, in this case, we define the norm for any function f or u, in this space, we're going to define the LP norm. Usually, you just write it in this way. Sometimes it's written uh, in this way. Uh, but this is defined as the integral from 0, 1, 0 to 1, u, x, p, dx, and then uh, the p's root. Okay? So that's the, the LP norm of u. So consider this LP, 0, 1, and uh, the P. This is the Banach space. Okay, and to show this again, we need to first show that the LP is linear, and apparently this is linear. Uh, and secondly, we need to show that this is the norm. And uh, this is the by the Minkowski uh, inequality, we know that uh, so apparently it's greater is not is uh, positive definite and uh, it is zero even only if u is zero almost everywhere and uh, it is um, homogeneous if we multiply 
u by some constant is just equal to a times the norm of u. And also the triangle inequality, which is the most important here thing here uh, to verify, and that is uh, guaranteed by the Minkowski's uh, uh, inequality, right? You know this. Okay, so that's the uh, either this or this. It's guaranteed by the Minkowski's inequality. Okay, so it is indeed normal. The only thing left is to show that it's complete. And uh, we also showed that the PLP space defined by, with the norm defined this way is complete. That's also something we have showed. The analysis, usual analysis. So I will not repeat it here. I'm going to go back and check the notes. Uh, so that's one typical example. Uh, another typical example is the, what is the LP space? So, is LP space, and that is the space of vectors, oh, sorry, space of sequences, infinite sequences, such that the, they have xk to the power p, and then take the sum. So it's like the discrete version of the one above, so one piece root is less than, it's finite. So LP space. Okay, and this is also a Banach space. And again, to show that it's Banach space, we need to show that it's linear. So the part is due to show that it's linear. And now I want to show that the norm, so this one is called the norm of uh, this x, sequence x. So we need to show that this is a, a positive definite. That's a, obviously true. Um, <clears throat> Has the it's a homogeneous again, it's the obvious, and also triangle inequality. This is verified by the generalized mean Hofstede inequality we, we showed in uh, in uh, uh, real analysis one. Okay, also have this by the generalized mean inequality. Okay, and the only thing left is to show that it is complete. Okay, we want to show that this is complete. So we haven't show this. So let me just show this part. So to show that it's complete, I we just need to show that if we have a sequence, I call it uh, I call it XK. Or uh, I'll say Yeah, XK. Or XN, sorry. N is the index in my sequence. And for each one of this again, this xn, for each fixed n, this is the xn1, xn2, so on and so forth. So suppose this is a sub this is a, a sequence in Rp, so this Rp, and I want to show uh, that if it is Cauchy, then it must be convergent and the limit is inside Rp. That's what I'm going to show. Okay, so now let's see what do we mean by that is Cauchy. So it's Cauchy means that for any epsilon, there exists some n uh, depending on epsilon only. That's the integer such that the uh, x n plus m minus x n. P is, uh, the p norm. Uh, it doesn't matter if this goes to zero or the p power of this goes to zero. So you can always just know just multiply p, and this is the mean. This means that x n plus m k minus x n k. Okay, summing k from one to infinity. This is uh, less than epsilon for all the n greater than or equal to the capital, n and all the m uh, in Natural number n, and in the all the in natural number m, right? So that's what I mean by the sequence is Cauchy right now. Okay, so again we're using the, going to use similar trick. Uh, first, we're going to show that they actually converge some point, and then we show that point is also, or that sequence is also inside L p. 
Okay. So as we can see, for any fixed fixed k, we know that x k uh, n plus m minus half x n k. This to the power p is less than or equal to, or partly is less than or equal to this, the infinite sum, which means that it's less than or equal to this. Right? And I know that this goes to zero as n goes to infinity. And or you want to be more rigorous, you just say that for every epsilon there exists n such that this uh, this thing is less than or equal to this, which is just this one, and that is less than epsilon. So that means this is true. Okay? And so you can choose epsilon to be a uh, piece root of epsilon or the, the piece power of epsilon, then you can take it out. Take the piece root on both sides. Eventually, you can show that for every fixed k, this is again a sequence. It's a Cauchy sequence. Cauchy sequence in R. Okay, and this Cauchy means that it's convergent. So I know there exists some. Uh, so I know that x k n converge to some x star k for each fixed k, and this is just number R. Okay, now I, then I define the x star to be x1 star, x, x star 1, x star 2, so on and so forth. In the, I want to show that dx n convert to, the question is if x n convert to x star. Okay, we show that for each fixed index k, they converge. But the question is if this is true. And uh, the proof of this is pretty um, straightforward. Uh, we know that for every fixed k, uh, for any, say, capital K, we know that um, the sum k to capital K, x n minus x n k minus x star k. K is from 1 to capital K. And that this will be uh, equal to the limit because the x, k, I know that for each fixed K, I know for each fixed K, this convert to this, right? This x k, s n k convert to x star K. Okay, so that means if I take, say, I take the limit, n goes to, m goes to infinity, I can replace the x star k by x n plus m k, right? Because I know that when m goes to infinity, this one goes to this. So that's why I can take the uh, limit, sorry, I have the sum, k from 1 to k to k. For each fixed k, I know this is true. This is converging to this. So there are only capital K of them, so I know this is true. Find the many of them, so I know this is true. And uh, this, apparently, if I keep the limit outside, I just look at the what inside, I know this, if you take the uh, finite sum, they will be less than or equal to, you take the infinite sum. Because the infinite sum is always adding the negative numbers. It's less than this. And by definition, this is equal to, the infinite sum is equal to the p norm of xn and minus xn plus m. Right? But we know that the sequence is Cauchy, so that means that I know that for any uh, epsilon, there exists some capital N. For any epsilon, there exists some non capital, capital N which depends on epsilon only, such that uh, this one is less than epsilon for all the n greater than or equal to capital N, and the all the m, integer m. Right, so I know that this will be, if this is the case, then they will be less than, because the, each term is less than, equal, less than epsilon, so the limit will be less than or equal to epsilon. So what we showed so far is that for every epsilon, 
there exists some n, and then for any k, for any k, this sum is less than or equal to epsilon for all the n greater than or equal to capital N. Okay, so this, and then this, such that this is less than or equal to uh, epsilon for all the n greater than capital N. Okay, if this is the case, then for any case this holds, that means the infinite sum, for infinite sum, this also holds. It's also less than or equal to epsilon. So eventually what we showed is for every epsilon, there exists a capital N such that this is less than epsilon for all the N greater than or equal to capital N. Right, for all the n greater than or equal to capital n. But this is the xk, xn minus x star, p, p norm. Okay, so for any epsilon, there exists a capital N such that this is true for all the n greater than or equal to capital n. Okay, so that means the xn convert to x star in this narrow P space. And then similarly we can show that this is less than or equal to x n or any fixed n minus x star plus x n p norm. So that is finite. That means x star is indeed in Rp. Okay, so that's how we show that uh, the Rp space is uh, complete. It's, so it's a Banach space. This is indeed a Banach space. Okay, now let's look at another example. Okay, so this example says that uh, suppose we have uh, omega in Orion and it's open bounded and uh, we have a k a fixed k it's not the index of some sequence now just a fixed k which is integer and then we consider the multi index what do we mean by what do we mean by out multi index is uh, it's like a tuple, uh, tuple like alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha k, so it depends on how many k you have at the beginning. So this, each of them is an integer or zero. Okay, so I would say this is in, in either an integer or zero, uh, and each one of them is integer or zero. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, the sum of alpha i from 1 to k is equal to is less is equal to k or less equal to k okay um, so I will call this one to be the value of my multi-index so you can see there are many ways to choose alpha 1 to alpha k as long as the sum is equal to this and with I sum this is less than or equal to I will say Oh, I'm sorry. I should stay in this way. Let's see here. Um, so the multi-index alpha is alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n. And each one of them is in is a natural number or zero. So there are n of them. And I define the value or the sum uh, denoted by the absolute value of alpha. So this is actually um, alpha i, i is from 1 to n. So now let's say I want this to be, I want to run over all these possible alpha such that the sum is less than or equal to the k I said earlier, right here. And then I can define this partial uh, derivative. You can see that I have u 
as a multivariate function from R omega to R. And then I can define the partial derivative. And this alpha tells me how many derivatives I should put on, how many partial derivatives I should put on each variable. So it should be uh, so defined in this way dx1 for alpha 1 times and the dxn for alpha n times. But in total, I can only take k of them, k partial derivatives. So u of x1 through xn. Okay, so this is the, the meaning of multi index. Now it will be used a lot in partial, derivative, uh, partial differential equations. And now this is my space. Uh, this is my space. Um, my space is a function of u that uh, is uh, is seeing ck, uh, meaning that there the kth partial derivative, no matter which k which combination you take, the the it is continuous up to the boundary of omega. Okay, so the closure of omega, and then we define the norm. The norm of u, in this case, is defined to be. Uh, first of all, we can see that uh, the it can run through all the points x in omega, and also uh, the k will be. Uh, the, the, I mean the multi index alpha that could run from small to to large. Right, so I have two maximum. One maximum is on the multi index. It must be less than equal to it for any possible. Uh, combinations of alpha that has less than equal to k. So, for example, you set k equals to 2, and you have two variables. You have three variables, for example, x1 through x3. So your n equals to 3. And say you decide to have k equals to 2. Then what are the possible uh, multi-indexes you have? If alpha is less than equal to k, it's either original function u, or d, uh, d, d u dx1, or d u dx2. This is the k equals to 1 case. This is k equals to 0 case. And then you have d1 square. That means you take a partial derivative with respect to x1 for twice. Oh, sorry, you have also d3. Okay, So you have d1 uh, square. You have d1 2. You have like d1 3, so on and so forth. So you have 9 of them. Okay, You can just need to choose any 3 or any two. Uh, you take a partial derivative twice on any of those three variables. Okay, so that's what this is. And then you have also the maximum for the points, which is this. So it would be partial derivative. Okay, so this value is the real value and uh, it depends on, and you take the maximum over the uh, omega. So I use a maximum because the the omega bar is compact set, right? Because it's the original, it is open and bounded. It's bounded, and then take the closure is uh, closed and op and bounded. So it's compact set. So I can replace. So I can actually reach the maximum, and also uh, this only have finite many choices. So I can take the maximum. So that's my definition for the norm. Okay, now we want to show that uh, uh, the space CK is closed under this norm. Okay, so uh, again we're going to show uh, yeah we're going to show this as a Banach space. The first is again to show that it's a linear, and this linear linearity is pretty easy to show for the CK. So it's this. A linear space. It's pretty easy to show. Second is to show that this is norm. Uh, showing this norm is pretty straightforward as well because of the way we define this. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's greater than equal to zero and is equal to zero if and only if you remember that this this thing here includes alpha equals zero, meaning that the original function. Uh, This is also included. Uh, this is also bounded by. This is bounded by the u norm. So if the u norm is equal to zero, uh, norm of u is equal to zero, then this must be zero. Almost, uh, <coughs> it must be zero everywhere. 
Okay, and uh, again, uh, it's uh, homogeneous, and uh, it also satisfies the triangle inequality. It's pretty easy to show that. Okay, so so this is indeed a norm. Okay, so the the critical thing here, or the most uh, <coughs> non-trivial thing here, is to show that the space is complete, so that we can claim that this is the this is the Banach space. So to show this complete, again, we need to um, we need to show that every Cauchy sequence is convergent. Okay, every Cauchy sequence is convergent. Uh, to show this. <coughs> Uh, I want to first make a remark uh, similar to the remark I made earlier. You, because this is taking the maximum for the alpha. So if you choose a specific alpha, it has to be less than or equal to this u, right? So that means if I take any specific alpha, then the maximum value of this must be bounded by the norm of u. Okay, for any specific alpha, so I'm going to use this fact to show that uh, this space is Cauchy. Uh, this space is complete. So suppose we have a sequence I call the UK. Suppose this is Cauchy. Then I'm going to show that um, uh, it is convergent to some function inside inside the uh, uh, inside the CK. Okay. Um, so to do that, I first notice that because this is the Cauchy, so if I consider any fixed multi-index alpha, and then I look at the partial u k, partial of u k, then I can think this as a this is a continuous function, right? This is a continuous function over omega bar. And the norm of this, if we consider this as a space, the standard norm of this space is the maximum value, right? Then this norm, which is just the maximum of x mega, is this, according to the definition of the standard norm in, in the C omega. And this is less than u, the norm of u, as I just mentioned here, as I just mentioned over here. Okay, so and that means for every fixed alpha, this is bounded by that, and uh, things I'm considering the Cauchy sequence. So if I have a Cauchy sequence, that means this u alpha, okay, minus u j, for example, this is going to be less than or equal to this u uh, my uk minus uj. Okay, so be careful that this norm is only for the C omega. Uh, but this norm, this norm right here is the norm we defined. Is this norm or this norm? Okay, and apparently if uh, I can see that K, when Kj goes to infinity, this goes to zero. So that means for each fixed alpha, this is, or you can treat this as a Cauchy sequence in the CK, uh, in the C omega. Okay. So that means for every fixed alpha, there exists, I would say, the this is Cauchy in C omega, and that means there exists I call it the V alpha. Uh, this alpha is the model index right here. So there exists V alpha, which is in C omega such that the uh, the partial derivatives of this uk converge to v alpha okay that's for sure for every alpha for every alpha i can do this so that means i have a bunch of functions u alpha and know that the partial derivatives converge to u alpha but you know uh, i showed this in convergence in the c omega this actually means that we know that as a sequence of continuous functions, they converge uniformly to this function v alpha, which makes this v alpha also uh, continuous. 
because it's the limit of uh, it's because a sequence of uniformly this is a sequence of continuous function which can converts uniformly over to this VR alpha and this is the a compact set that means this is also a continuous function so I do know this for each alpha and the question you now is how do I show this sequence is actually converging to um, some function uh, also in, in this space and the goal right here is to show that uh, remember that when alpha say when k equals to zero then this v alpha I have no choice for this alpha but choosing zero for each one of them. This is essentially just a v of zero, zero. I have n of them. And this, I want to show that, say that this is just the u. So I'm going to show that uk convert to this u. So that's for v, uh, for alpha, sorry, for k equals zero, and also for k equals to one. I will say in this way, be better. It's alpha equals to zero, alpha equals to one all the way to alpha equals k, I know that there are corresponding uh, v alpha for each choice, for each one index. And the goal is to show that uh, if I define the u to be this v0 right here, then all the other v alpha, I want to show that they are actually equal to the uh, uh, partial derivative of u, I got it for the first one. And if I can do this, then I can claim that my uk convert to this u. The reason is that the uk convert to the u, and my partial uh, alpha uk will convert to partial alpha u, which is the v alpha I had, I said in here. I know that they convert to that. So if this is equal to that, then uh, they will convert to this one here. And because each one of them is, uh, as I said, is, continu is continuous, and uh, this convergence actually means the uniform convergence is in omega. So that means this is also this or this. They're equal. If I can prove that, if I could prove that, then this will be also in C omega. And then I show this. This uh, is in C omega for every alpha, and that shows that this u is also in the space also in here because it's indeed continuous uh, case times continuous or case time different or c case time differentiable continuously differentiable okay so i i think i had i hope i have made this clear so the clear the goal right now is the, first of all what we have in hand, hand is that if we show if we know this is Cauchy then it's easy to show that for every fixed alpha multi-index alpha we can show there exists a v alpha such that this convert to v alpha in this sense, and that also means that just means that this convert to this uniformly or this converts to uniformly. And our goal is to show that when we take corresponding partial derivatives of the first v alpha, which is v zero, uh, I will get the 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 other uh, partial derivatives of v alphas, and then by this I can show that this u is actually the limit. Of this v uk. Okay, so how do we show this? I just need to show the uh, the first case when alpha, say alpha is equal to one zero zero zero. This is the first case, and uh, the rest will be similar. The others will be similar. Okay, yeah, just to show this one. So I uh, simplify the notation. When alpha is this, then the u then the v alpha will be just the v one zero zero, and this is supposed to be the limit of that. But right now, since r is just a one zero zero, so I know this is just a du d uh, dx one. So the question is, do I have this? Okay. What I know right now is that u is the limit. So what I know. Or we what we said is that u is the limit uk. So I know that the uk converts to u uniformly. Okay, and I also know that d uh, alpha, which is d1 right now, let's say alpha is this already. 
So this is D1UK. I know they uniformly converge to the V1 or, or V100. Okay, I want to show that I want to show that du1 or du dx1 is equal to the v1 or equal to the limit of this bottom row right here. Okay, so let's see how to do that. Um, first of all, because the omega is open, so I I know that for every point x. X to the one, X two, X n in omega. I know there exists a neighborhood of X that is in omega. Okay, so it's like this is omega, this is the X, and I know there is a neighborhood in that. And then more specifically, I'm choosing some X one zero, arbitrary zero, just at some point neighbor uh, in the neighbor. So if this is the X one. This is x2, then I essentially just uh, choosing some point on the horizontal line, just the next to the x. So only at x1 is x10 now, the others are the same. Okay, and that is also in omega. So what I want to do here is to uh, note that for each k, for each k in the sequence, I know that uk x1, x2, all the way to x n is equal to, I know by the fundamental theorem of calculus, I can take this as this point plus the integral from x10 to x1. Okay, so like I'm taking integral right here. If I zoom in, so this is x, this is the neighborhood of x, and this is the point x10 x2 all the way to xn, and this point is x1, x2 to xn. So I'm looking at this. Okay, so it's essentially taking the integral from this point to that point, and then I have the uk, and the first component will be I call it t, x2, all the others are the same, and dt. Okay, that's the fundamental theorem of calculus. Sorry, this is the d1 d1 of uk, or duk dx1. Okay, and now what I know about this is that um, as k goes to infinity, this one converges uniformly to ux1 through xn. And this one converges uniformly to ux10, x2. And this one here, uh, I know that is converging to the v1 to v10. So this is essentially converging to v1000 and the t x2 xn. So that's the integrand. Okay, so I will get the u of x1, x2. Up to xn will be equal to u, sorry, u, yeah, converging to u x10, x2, xn, plus x1, x, x10, x1. This will be v10, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, t, x2, xn, dt. Okay? Uh, because this one converts to that, the integral of that must converge into that because we have a finite a length, right? We have finite length. So that's because if you, have, you know that fk converts to f uniformly, then the integral of fk will converge to the uh, integral of f if you have just a finite but, uh, length to integral. Okay, so that's this. And because of that, uh, I can see that the u will be... Uh, the partial derivative with respect to x1 of u will exist uh, because by this we can easily see that we take the partial derivative of u with respect to x1 and apparently this one will be a constant because all these things are constant right now so and then we take the partial derivative with respect to x1 and this is the function of x1 x1 only here so that means this is equal to v one zero zero 
of x1, x2, xn. Okay, and we show this for every x, and this is true. So that means when you really take the partial derivative of this u, it will be equal to uh, take the partial derivative with the respond to x1 for this u, I will actually get the limit for this for them. Okay, and this for this shows for this case, and then we can just continue doing so. We can consider the one one zero zero zero, and so on and so forth. And uh, by induction, we can easily show that actually the uh, this is equal to the v alpha. And from here, we said this is in C omega because each one is a limit of uniform convergence uh, uh, of or the limit of continuous functions which convert to this VRV uniformly. So this is also in that, in the C omega bar. So it's in C omega bar. And this implies that U is actually in CK. Okay. And also this UK, sorry, converge minus U. Uh, this norm, which is in the, the CK omega norm, the norm we define in this problem, we know that this will be converging to uh, zero as well, because this is just the sum of bunch of this thing. And this is will be in C omega, as we learned before uh, in previous lecture. And this is the sum of all the alpha let's say equal to k. And they will come go to zero. Okay, so that's how we prove this. Okay, so that means this is also a uh, uh, Banach space. So this is actually a straightforward extension of the 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 case we had before, like for this space where this norm is defined as the maximum value of the function over the domain omega. So this is just a direct extension by adding partial derivatives, and we get that. Okay, and this norm is the one that we defined in this, in this example. Okay, so that's one example. And uh, let's look at another important example of the Banach space. So this just tells us how many, how widely this Banach space or the theory of Banach space or the theory of uh, functional analysis can be applied to a, very, a large uh, number of applications or larger number of problems uh, in mathematics. Okay. And uh, this example is called the Sobolev space, which is uh, one of the most important uh, concepts in partial, differ partial differential equation. Okay, so again, we're going to define omega to be open, bounded. This is in Rn. Okay, and I also assume it's, to, uh, it's connected. Okay, connected just means that for for any two points, uh, you can find a continuous curve uh, that can that can connect this to connect these two points. So things like this. You can always find a, a curve and connect them. Or even this, okay. You have two points. You can always connect them. Okay. Think that this. Okay. So it's such a set, and then um, again for any fixed k, would be similar to the k above. And also, let's say I have p uh, between one and the infinity. Then uh, I define the U W K P omega. Sometimes it's just written as U K P. Okay, uh, for simplicity. Okay, so this norm is defined to be the sum of partial alpha U the p to the power dx and alpha less than equal to k and the whole thing together while we're the p to the root okay 
uh, if you like to have this x here. So it's a part of derivative of u at x, and take the integral. Take, take the pth power and take the integral. Okay, so this is how we define a norm, and uh, we can easily check, again, we can easily check that this is the norm, satisfying all those three properties of norms, and uh, we um, will be interested in the space called the WKP omega. And the norm is just what we defined, WKP omega. So this is the so-called Sobolev space. So, Sobolev. Okay, so this can be considered as the extension of the C omega space we discussed earlier, but the norm was defined to be that. Define, say we define the norm to be the ux, or the pth power then be the p dx over p. And this is how we define the norm right here, the pth norm. And we know that this, for we consider the case when p equals to 1, we said that this set, or this uh, no, this metric space, or this uh, norm space right now, if I introduce the norm, but uh, automatically it will become, we can use this to define a metric, right? So this one is the normed linear norm, normed linear space, but uh, it is not complete, because we, we can find a sequence of continuous functions that converge uh, in this sense, they're Cauchy in this sense, and they convert to some point that is not continuous anymore. And this is a similar issue. We can consider it up to the kth power. Um, but when we consider this for the general case, we will have the ck omega, and then we will do define, well, you can define it in this way. We can define this to be, to, we can still use the WKP norm, the problem is that, like, uh, like in this case, uh, it's not complete. This is also not complete either. This is not complete either. Okay, because we can find a sequence that is k k times differentiable, but they're uh, and they convert in this the norm of this sense, but um, the limit is not in this uh, space anymore. Okay, and what we do is to make this. Although we have a metric space right now, or we have a linear space right now, and we make it complete, and that's how we what do we get after the completion. So to include some functions, uh, to include some functions to make this complete, just like what they did, we did for here, we uh, convert. We also include the limits of the sequence in this space. Then uh, they will become a complete space, and this becomes. After we do the completion, it becomes L1 or Lp space with the norm P. And as an analog, when we make a completion of this, and we'll get that. Okay, just like what we did for, for this one right here. Okay, so this is the core theory uh, in partial differential equations. But we're not uh, we're not we're going to stop here just uh, to uh, give you a kind of hand waving. Um, example showing that this is actually a special case of uh, Banach space. After we make the completion, this normal Sobolev space is actually a Banach space, um, and it has very has the most it has plays the most important role in partial differential equations nowadays. And also, um, a special case of that is when k equals to two. Oh, sorry, when p equals to two. Uh, when p equals to two, we have w, we have w k two space, and also we have this w k two omega. Just recall that why the l p for our general l p space l two space is special, because this is actually we can define inner products on this on this omega uh, on this l two. Okay, because we say that if two functions u v are in l two. We can define the inner product of uv and just to be defined of u times v, integral of u times v dx. So similarly, if I have p equals to here, then we can define inner product on this. So that's why this becomes eventually becomes a Hilbert space since it's 
uh, at a thinner product, and the inner product can naturally indu induce this norm, and also the space is complete. So that's what we call this Hilbert space. And in this case, um, the um, the power is naturally k, and uh, I know the p is equals to two, so I can just write it in this way. H k omega. Okay, but actually I have a inner product defined on that, and with inner product we can easily get a norm. So this is also this is called a Hilbert space. Hilbert space, and we're going to talk about general Hilbert space later in this class, uh, where we have norms. But now at this moment you just think that for for the sublet space when p equals two, then it becomes a Hilbert space where we can define inner products. But generally this is what the uh, uh, partial differential equation we discuss. Okay. Uh, 